All right, welcome back to another installment of Julian's Random Projects. Uh, this voiceover done in post, because I forgot to record one. <laughs> uh, you're gonna wanna check out this episode. Uh, we make a lot of progress on the blue uh, MG Midget here, and uh, getting it all cleaned up, checking stuff off of our list of uh, things to do. Spoiler alert, we actually get to drive this thing in this episode. There's a ton of fast forwarding uh, footage going on. You're gonna see a lot of that. Uh, trying to get through it. You know, but I could I could upload like you know an hour, two hours worth of stuff, or uh, we could speed it up and I could try and get it as succinct as possible. I think we're coming in somewhere around like the 19 minute mark on this one. So sit back, relax, check it out. Oh my gosh! Oh my! Now I tossed a little bit of Teflon tape on the barbs here, but that's not what's sealing this. It's that O-ring there that's sealing up against the um, the face of this. Or at least that's the way it looks like it's done. But it's the where it's sealing here. It doesn't look as smooth or as mirrored as this as it got stamped into place. So this is just a bit of uh, extra insurance in case that's what's supposed to be there. But uh, says the guy that didn't take these out to make sure. We'll we'll check for leaks. We'll be alright. Not sure what these are supposed to be. How much you reef on those? Just give them a nice German torque there. It's probably good. All right, let's uh, start walking around the hood here and see if we can find a nice high spot to place this thing. You know, something like that. Keeping these runs nice and short. A lot cleaner. I think that might be one good spot there. I still need to, we're, we're repurposing. I'm trying to repurpose the heater core that used to live over here. You saw us remove that uh, in a much earlier video and got it cleaned up and we're gonna try and see if it's enough of a radiator effectively. That's what that is. If, you've, if, if you're not familiar, the, the, the ability for your car to heat its interior cabin is just a second type of radiator, a much smaller one that typically lives up underneath the dashboard and it takes hot coolant off of your internal combustion engine and it radiates it into the, the car. They run a fan to move some of that air across th that element. So we're trying to do the opposite here. We're trying to have it on the exterior of the car, run warmer or hot coolant through it and then see if we can shed some of that heat. Uh, we'll keep an eye on it. I'll, I'll, I'll double check to make sure in the software there's some sort of a upper like temperature limit cutoff, and then we'll just drive it around and see how it goes. I'm not really, I'm not too worried about it. This this particular guy here, this one's not actually out of the running just yet. I still might use this as a uh, reservoir if for some reason the the shiny one doesn't work out. I like, I like the shiny one both because I, it's more likely that it was not leaking. I didn't buy, I was too lazy to go testing this thing, and also it had that little window, a little port on the side to tell what level the water was by just looking at it. So I like that about the, uh, the cheapy uh, Amazon hot rod special. So we're going to go with the shiny bit. If it doesn't work, we'll go back to the old trusty. All right, so here's a bit of a tip for you. If you're having trouble getting one of these barbs into your, your heater hose, and just doesn't wanna go, one of the things that I like to do is to heat this up. If you've ever messed around with hot hoses, if you're working on a car on the side of the road, you notice it's very pliable and they're very uh, uh, forgiving. And we're, we're gonna try and replicate that so this loosens up a little bit. We can slide her home, if you will. Um, if that fails, we'll make with the honeymoon grease. See, I'm checking to see how bendy it is. 
Bendy is a technical term. for it. Dry. We want to, the pump is designed to have water running through it, so I don't want to run it. So you guys might know Velcro. Velcro is a brand name. If you're looking for this in a generic form or you work in the industry and you don't want to refer to it as Velcro by name, uh, implying that that's the one you have to purchase for the thing you're building, but you just want some of this. It's called hook and pile. So this is the, the rough uh, hook side and then the pile side actually grabs onto these little loops. Uh, some people call it hook and loop taste, uh, hook and loop tape as well, um, referring to both parts here. And my preference is usually to leave the pile side or the, um, the loop side on the surface that it would stay with and my hands might be in and out. Meaning if I take this battery out of here and I come in here to service it and do work, do I want the itchy side still up and rubbing on it or would I prefer the soft side? Um, so it's just preference. Or if you think that you're gonna take this battery, let's say you're working on an electric bike or something, and you've made this modular so that you could pull it out and take it up into the office with you and charge it underneath your desk, it would behoove you to put the soft side on this so that you can slip it into a cargo pocket or in your backpack and it's not grabbing onto a bunch of different fabrics as it's sliding in and around your bag. So take a moment to think about which side you want to put the uh, Velcro on before you just go slapping it in. All right, now a lot of this is just temporary. Um, just setting this in place later, I'll either 3D print something here or purchase a single DIN uh, cover for this and then have some of the switches or things that we need uh, pop out here. Um, and I've also got to get some more thought about how I'm gonna mount this guy. I might just you know, drop it in like so, maybe tilt it towards the driver. We'll see. I need to embiggen that hole and then toss in uh, this guy here for voltmetering. So let's look around the shop and see if I can find something that would help with that. All right, so I'll do one of these. We've got a, a, a series of them, but they, they're effectively all the same thing. We're gonna run this to a, a healthy length so that I can still get this thing in and out. And of course, I'm not, completely married to the fuse box and battery being here. It's just something I'm kind of toying around with. Uh, I like the idea of not being able to find it and make people kind of look for it. I want to have the ability to maybe move these around or make them serviceable. So I'm going to leave some kind of a service loop in here uh, tucked away. And you'll, you'll notice that there's, they're all effectively the same wire, but you, I, there's only a handful of them and I can tell where they're going. So uh, it'll give me an idea of what type of fuse to use with that particular circuit. So it, this reminds me, if you've ever seen one of these movies where they're defusing a bomb or something and the guy, they gotta call some sort of technician over the phone and he's saying this guy can't get there quite fast enough so they're gonna, they're gonna hit him on the horn. And he's talking him through and he's like, okay, when you open the, the cover, you should see these colored wires. And I want you to cut the red one. Uh, I guess if you're ever gonna be uh, the builder of said uh, <laughs> plot point, you can pick any color you want. Hell, you can make them all yellow, you can make them all gray, in this case, black and white. Uh, there's no reason that black has to be ground. It's just, it's, uh, we, we, we've landed on some of these conventions uh, where red is positive, black is negative, uh, it's racist. But the uh, color code isn't really uh, 
hard and fast. There's there's not some you know there's some rule book or something. And besides, I mean, you're already making this thing. You got you're you're breaking a lot of laws. You might as well go for broke and make them all the same color. Uh, so would love to see that in a movie. I'd love to see somebody pop that thing open and they're all gray wires of all the same color. That'd be awesome. Uh, so let's do one of those and then I'll we'll we'll cut to this thing being kind of tucked up and uh, and done. And it'd be a bit, it's a bit hard to see from the angle you're looking at, but uh, this one's going to go to to the uh, one of the spades on the fuse block, and then uh, this one's going to go to one of the screw post terminals on the ground bus that we uh, put in earlier. And so we'll just keep doing this until they all get tucked up in there. Moves. I said it moves. Yeah, it moves. Just be careful. This is an old car, so it could break down. Yeah. Um, I don't know about going down the driveway. The speed limit on the car is crazy. <laughs> Can't even tell what speed you're going. Yeah. I think going it's, left and right. It's broken. It's all wound up and know. it springs off. Yeah, like 0, 5, 10, 15, 20. It's kind of cool, like counting by fives. Exactly. Nailed it. Cool. What do you think? Good. Right. Yeah. Right, I, I didn't even know it came. It didn't go all the, all the way up our steep driveway. Now, how did we get out? All right, ladies. Let's see what we've accomplished. Uh, wiring hope. Wiring the high voltage pack to inverter, done. Install a hood, still needs to be done. Installing transmission gasket, it stopped leaking, so that, that, that kind of fixed itself. Uh, bought the gasket kit, just in case we need to do that. Uh, mount the 12 volt battery, mounted, uh, sure. <laughs> uh, mount the HV pack, yeah, I like that. Uh, install a charger, done, it's in the back. Of course, the port's not done, but we'll, we'll call that done for now. Uh, let's see, mount fuse panel, yes. Remove clutch master cylinder, it's uh, still hanging in there. Remove, remove rear inverter bracket. Oh, make make rear inverter bracket. I have no idea what I was talking about there, so. Uh, past Julian's didn't spell it right or make himself very known. Uh, let's see, mount motor controller done. Yes, that was the, the bit there with the drilling. Uh, and wire up that controller. Done. All right, cool. So we've still got uh, a couple of things to do. Installing the hood, uh, a bit of beautification. I still need to bleed the brakes. Uh, that's been done, but not as well as I'd like. What else? New stuff. Uh, I don't know if I want to use the other side of this or what, but um, the 12-volt pump, the water pump, is just full chooch. It's just it's hauling balls, that thing. It's got a ton. It's just flowing a lot of water, and there's not a lot of capacity in there. Uh, and my gut tells me that that's just too much flow, so I need to cut that down. I had the power supply hooked up to it earlier, and I was able to get a, what I thought would have been a nice little trickle, kind of a, uh, I don't know, the kind of thing that you'd see in like an aquarium. Just moving the water through, that's all we really need to do for this for this guy. Uh, we'll keep an eye on the temps, but I want to drop that down because I don't think it, wanna, it's, it's wasting power. We'll just call it reduce pump flow. Uh, and then lastly, I mean really, just get this thing through the DMV, uh, get it tag, titled, licensed, so tag. It's already insured, that's just because I'm a grown up. Oh, I need to, uh, whether it's made out of particle board and some faux leather or um, sheet metal, I need to build a, uh, a divider between the cabin and the trunk. Uh, I think, think that there was something like that originally. Finding if I had one, even if it was old and tattered, I could make a template that'd be really nice. Um, so I'm gonna look around for that online, see if I can buy one cheap. Uh, else I'll have to make that. So what would we, what would we call that? Mm, it's almost like a rear firewall. Let's call it that for now, <laughs> or like a parcel shelf of sorts. But it's not actually a shelf. Uh, let's call that rear firewall. Yeah, and that's mostly to keep people from reaching back there and 
touching that uh, high voltage battery pack. Oh, geez, there he goes. Uh, make touch safe. So today you saw uh, our, our camera girl joined us and where she was sitting, she was fine, adult supervision. Um, I, I knew that so long as she didn't pop open the uh, the contactor box, which she could actually physically do if she reached down there and, and, and undid the latches. So I need to put a small lock on that or some, even a zip tie, just something that would keep um, a normal person out of there uh, for risk of electric shock. Um, and especially kids, kids get curious and start messing around with stuff. I need to have a barrier of entry that keeps them from uh, shocking themselves. And I think that's the only piece in this car that's not touch safe. All the stuff in the back um, is covered up. There are some, you'll, you you might have seen in the in past videos, there's some exposed fuses, but that's all on the negative side. So if you touch that, you're just touching the the negative most point of the battery pack. I'm not too worried about that, uh, but I might put a, a sheet of plexiglass over the whole thing and just call it done up for the, for the trunk area and create like a false floor above the battery pack. Uh, we'll play with that, but it doesn't mean that that doesn't have to happen to get roadworthy. This list here is just stuff that I need that I feel like I need, uh, so that I can go putzing around town in this thing. So I had to get a bunch of this done, uh, so that I can shift focus onto the next project that you're going to want to see. Uh, it's a poor man's power wall. Now I've, we've been blessed with, uh, our electricity coming from PG and E and some of you all across the country are well aware. Uh, they're doing all sorts of goofy stuff and yanking power for whole neighborhoods and going three, five days at a time with no electricity. So I'm not playing those reindeer games. So, <laughs> so we probably got about one more video with the MG midget where I'll do a overarching, you know, from beginning to end and uh, see what this thing finally looks like cleaned up and on the road, we've got to do a range test. Uh, so that'll be in that, if not a separate video. Uh, so if you're interested in this or other types of uh, battery electric projects, make sure that you're subscribed. Apparently hitting the bell helps uh, with the algorithms slash getting people notified. Some folks have so many subscriptions it's just in their feed it's just breathing on by. Um, make sure that you have that bell checked. Uh, ensures that they explicitly tell you that a new video is up. So uh, it would really help. Julian's Random Projects. Thanks, guys. I'm hanging in, there ain't no doubt, and I'm hanging tough, over and out, over and out, over and out.